All right, welcome to Overrated, Underrated. If you've watched any of Gary V's stuff, you probably know how the format goes, but it's pretty quick fire. We've got Ken behind the camera here who's gonna be um, feeding me common things to do with learning and productivity. And I'm just gonna say whether I think it's underrated, overrated, properly rated, and basically just like one or two lines to justify it. But I'm not going to have time to go through in detail about every single thing that I'm talking about. But if you want me to go into detail about any of the things that I do rate, then leave a comment and then we'll have a look through and I'll make more videos diving into why I rated something the way that I did. All right, so let's get started. All right, first one I've got, taking notes in class. Overrated because I think people focus too much on the writing of the notes rather than the thinking about the information, but it's necessary. Anki cards for memorizing. Anki cards for memorizing? properly rated because it's effective for memorizing but often used in ways that it sh it's not designed for use. The Pomodoro technique. Slightly overrated. It's a great entry technique for understanding work rest timing but it's a little overused and uh, it needs to be adapted a little bit in the advanced stages. How about cramming before an exam? I'm actually going to say that cramming is actually underrated but it depends on how you're cramming. I think cramming, forcing yourself to do stuff in a short period of time is really good, but cramming in a way that's like gaming the system to like hit the rubric, that sets up a lot of bad habits. What about going to medical school? Going to medical school is, um, yeah, it's kind of overrated. Yeah. Do you want to elaborate on <laughs> nah, that? Nah, I'll just leave it at that, I think. <laughs> All right, next one I've got. Studying at cafes. Studying at cafes, I think, is underrated. and. I say that knowing that studying at cafes is highly rated, but I personally think that using like cafe breaks, resetting environment, it's got a lot of benefits. And if you can use it strategically, it's, it can be really effective as part of a full system. So this one might be the same answer, but what about studying at libraries? Studying at libraries, I think is probably, yeah, is, I think it's actually probably underrated because um, people find that they study at libraries and they get like really bored and they get really sleepy, but they know that it produces focus in some cases. So I think they should use it, but complement it with other things that keep that focus high. What about tutoring? Broadly speaking, I think tutoring is grossly overrated because it takes the responsibility and the load off of the student. I always think, wouldn't you rather not need the tutor in the first place? But there are some exceptions. What about the four hour work week? Four hour work week is is underrated. Not, not, not enough people know about the way of thinking that opens up for you to start considering, you know, alternative ways of kind of living and, and viewing work. How about Notion? In the context of like work or for study? Let's say it's for study. For study, overrated. If the rating is here, if this is over, it is here. I think Notion is not designed for studying in any possible way. I think it produces a lot of bad habits. I think it reinforces, you know, ineffective cognitive processes. I think it um, just creates linearity of information. I think it creates illusions of learning with relationships. It, it does not tick the boxes in the way it needs to be ticked. It has potential though. So Notion, if you want to reach out to me, even though I absolutely roasted you, um, uh, yeah, please do. Meditation. Meditation, I would say is generally speaking, very underrated, but I think people don't have a good understanding of what meditation really is. Sleep. Sleep is like, everyone loves sleep. You're rating it highly. Behave in that way. Sleep is underrated. People know it should be rated this way, but they underrate it. Speaking of sleep, what about naps? Oh, wait, by the way, I get a lot of sleep. People ask me this all the time. I sleep a lot. I sleep more than everyone in this room. I usually get nine, sometimes even 10 hours of sleep. Right, because I really like feeling rested. Okay, what about naps? I think naps are often a sign of sleep deprivation. Caffeine? I love coffee. I think caffeine is, I think caffeine is properly rated because people sort of know that too much caffeine is not good for you. What about dopamine detox? Okay, dopamine detox falls into a very small list of things that sound hippie as hell, but I actually really firmly believe in because of the fact that our modern environment does have super normal levels of dopamine hits that is just completely unnatural and your brain is not very well adapted at, at being healthy with that mindset. I personally love taking dopamine detoxes. Zettelkasten. Zettelkasten is, it's, it's slightly, ever so slightly overrated, 
I think it's because people don't understand the, the limitations of its use and how to actually be using it properly because the way you create the relationships and structures, like the thinking that's involved in doing that, that makes a really big difference to how effective the technique actually is. But it's a pretty good starter technique for someone that's just coming off normal, non-relational note-taking. Nootropics? Nootropics really depends on the actual nootropic. There are a lot of just BS nootropics out on the market that research is abysmal for. Uh, but there are some that are kind of promising. And to be honest, like, even if it's just a placebo, sometimes you gotta think, is the placebo worth paying money for? The answer could be yes. Uh, overall, I actually think overrated because people sort of see it too, like, blanket. How about open book exams? Open book exams, I'm gonna say, like, for, for education, like, for goodness of education, is underrated. Massively underrated because it's more realistic to how you actually need to access information. And it means that it places pressure on higher order learning rather than just memorizing stuff because you know that you're just about to look that up. The problem is people don't know how to study in that way. Lectures? Lectures are properly rated because I know that lots of students go to them, lots of students don't go to them. I think figuring out how you can use lectures as a resource, one of many resources, is, is an important skill that I think is properly rated. How about office hours? Office hours are massively underrated. But you need to know what you're asking in the office hours. Don't use office hours to just ask questions that you could figure out by yourself. Use it for clarification, for deeper understanding. Get understanding that is not easily obtainable through the resources that you already have and use it to deepen knowledge. How about Tiago Cortez building a second brain program? I don't know about their particular program, but the concept of second brain, I think second brain in itself is, is properly rated or even slightly underrated because second brain can be really useful for professionals especially or for you know like open book assessment type things um, i think people rely on second brain like instead of having a first brain and that's where it becomes overrated <laughs> if you know if like you can't just paste it from your second brain into the exam if you don't have access to it so that becomes problematic that's the way a lot of people use edelkasten as well they almost use it as a second brain rather than augmenting their first brain First brain needs to be working first before you get to the second brain. <laughs> yeah. Rome research. Rome research is... I'm, I'm very sad to say that I believe Rome research is a little overrated. And I say this because I purchased like the five-year believer thing for Rome research and I use Rome research quite a lot. I think it had a lot of potential, but I just think that as a second brain, it could have been really good. But I think they just fell short in terms of the usability. Uh, how about the two-minute productivity rule. Is this like the rule where you just start for two minutes? So it you takes just, two minutes to complete the I just do it, do it straight away? I think really underrated. You can never underestimate how impactful mental freedom and just less things on your plate can do for your decision making and sense of urgency and just um, quality of work that you're producing. I'm a firm believer of two minute rule. I know we touched on the four hour work week, but how about Tim Ferriss? Uh, I think Tim Ferriss is properly rated. I don't necessarily agree with some of his things uh, from like a technical point of view or the methodology, but he was one of the first people that really brought it into the light and made things mainstream. He's the reason a lot of people even think about some of the stuff to begin with. So in a way, he's, he, he, he paved an important stone, I think. But I think the discussion needs to be taken further than that. Journaling? Journaling is, especially for young males, I think is underrated, but I think also journaling is not always helpful if you're just kind of using it to feed into your own psych like spiral. But as a, you know, there are methods of journaling that you can use that can be very helpful at cognitive retraining and, and helping yourself really work through issues. Multitasking? Multitasking in the conventional sense is extremely overrated to the point of total uselessness for a lot of reasons. It just doesn't really exist and it, there's a lot of cognitive switching penalty and the sacrifice of your productivity is usually extremely high. Conversely, deep focus is underrated. Waking up early? Waking up early is super overrated. So if you look at research around waking up early versus late, you find that the effects are usually relatively short term. It seems to be more the novelty of changing times where you have time available. So early morning people, if they start being nocturnal, they get the same type of productivity improvement as you would get from someone that normally wakes up late, starting to wake up early, but it then fades. So really the ideal way is to constantly fluctuate, but who the hell is gonna do that? So basically just wake up whenever it is a normal time for you to wake up and then not rely on waking up early to be the thing that changes your life. What about the Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hour rule to mastery? 
The way that most people interpret it, I'm gonna say is overrated because they take it a little too literally, but in the idea of it takes time and repetition and diligence and consistency, which is an idea that at the time was not something that was like so universally just like understood as like this 10,000 hours type thing. I think at the time that was, that was pretty impactful. Productivity hacks. Like super overrated, yeah. Because usually if you've got a productivity issue that is significant enough that it's affecting your life, small tips and hacks are usually gonna be insufficient to change things enough to make a real difference. And constantly looking for hacks might mean that it takes time away from things that could make a real difference, which could be a little bit more fundamental. They take a little bit more time. And that's the end of the list. So if you liked it, then let me know, leave a comment. Uh, if there's anything that you want me to dive into more, then let me know as well. As you know, we're all playing the YouTube game. So if you enjoy this type of content, leave a like. If you really like the content, consider subscribing. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.